Talking, talking with famous people. Hi, host Eric here, host of Talking with Famous People. Take three on ENTP versus ESTJ. First two starts were false. This one won't be. You see here the four slides that are the main slides comprising this video. We're going to compare the traits between the two types. Let's move right ahead. Bob, next slide, please. Bob, good. Thank you. Okay, there it is. Main table is what I refer to this as, what the file is called on my computer. And it basically just lays out for you the stacks of each of the types and the default approach, what I call that function. And then the second, and you, you can see it in front of you. Make note also at the bottom there the space and time designations. So each of these functions has a space or time designation that relates to, to stasis or to fluidity. Uh, this is something that is distinct to my model of this a little bit, somewhat. It's, I mean, this the way that my model works is more or less a skin that fits on top of socionics. It interprets it a little bit differently, a couple of things. One thing that's different is I do rename the functions. I think these are better names for them than the existing ones. So when we look at ESTJ, you're seeing somebody who pushes first, regulates second, disrupts third, and stays fourth. So this sounds very much like a aggressive person, and they're not at all, as a matter of fact, because we need, we need to make sure we, we distinguish between the function name and what the function does and our sort of colloquial meanings of the word. So in a strict function sense, to disrupt is simply to interrupt a, a proceeding uh, protocol. Push is simply to move elements needed to be moved in order to initiate and then proceed with a given protocol. How these things manifest in actual life are going to be very removed from the machine code level, so to speak. Put the next slide, please. Okay, cool. So this one just says what each of these functions, if it's your main function, does. So let's look particularly at the two at question here, TE and NE. TE is a function of causality. Okay, so it deals with closed system, real world manifestations of logic. NE is an engine of mutation. It is one way in which new logic new logics emerge and then if we look at the last column there we'll see what they prioritize te prioritizes efficacy and any prioritizes flexibility you can also see in this phone in this little table here which um which functions are precluded by the existence of NE, or at least two of the functions that are precluded by the existence of NE, NI and SE, and it necessitates, of course, um, SI, and the reason is because NE and SI are inverse proportionals, just as TE and FI are inverse proportionals. Okay, so what we know is that an ESTJ is going to be not particularly deft with their own feelings. They're going to under, understand their own feelings about as well as I keep my house tidy, which is probably intermittently they'll have a burst of feeling understanding where they hurry up and hurry and just clean a bunch of shit and they're all of a sudden they understand the feelings really well for like a day and then it's back to not understanding them at all. I would guess that would be the... Um, the equivalent there. Okay, so anyway, that is something to look at here, this table. Let's move along. I don't want to take too long with this. Yeah, get away, you fucking fly. Hate flies. Okay, now we're on to the inverse proportionality slide. This explains the inverse proportionality thing. Push and stay are inverse proportionals. One cannot push others unless one knows what it means to stay. We would also say that to the extent one is pushing, one is not staying, and to the extent that one is staying, one is not pushing. So it makes them inversely proportional. And yet at the same time, you can't have one in existence as a concept without the other in existence in a concept. Right? They're the the other side of the teeter-totter or the uh, seesaw. Okay. So again, 
I'm talking about the space and stasis thing here. Space and stasis are N-I-T-E-F-I-S-E, -E, and they're going to represent people who generally, it's, it's kind of backwards, which is to say, like, if you are, if you are driven by primarily space functions, you're going to see things as fluid, you're going to see things as, as fundamentally by nature as being static, and you're going to see fluidity out in the world and want to pin it down. So if you're a space stasis person, space stasis person, you want to, um, you're, you're making an effort to control. You're making an effort to change by controlling, to pin things down. If you are a time person, you're making an effort to change by freeing, by um, letting things up. So then, and you tend to th see things, because you're naturally a time person, you see things as static, you want them to be fluid, so you mess with them. All right, so that's the, the one of the underlying differences between this or and socionics is I see that as sort of like the top level taxonomy is space time rather than any other thing. Like the top level taxonomy in both union cognitive functions and socionics is going to be um, the judging perceiving functions. But I don't view it as that. I view it as there's only one judging function that's intuition and the perceiving functions uh, so to speak, are a judging function, intuition, and an experiencing function, sensing. And then there is additionally going to be two execution justification functions, which are thinking and feeling. So really what's going on is your intuition makes a judgment, your thinking and your feeling verify to a certain extent, and or... Um, or contradict your intuition, and then your intuition resets, reroutes, okay? But your intuition ultimately is the judger. It's the one who gives you the judgments. Your thinking and your feelings, they help you to evaluate those judgments, and they help you to understand whether it's a good judgment or a bad judgment. The bottom line is, that's why we need to focus on dialectic rather than rhetoric if we want to get to the truth, because the truth is, we're both feeling our intuitively resonant truths according to our dominant perspectives, what is actually the best course of action is going to be a complicated question that requires endless framework dis debate. If you want to sort of debate it out, the best way to actually adjudicate the issue is to sit down and say, let me find the truth in what you're saying and you find the truth in what I'm saying. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Finally, I get down to the topic, huh? Did I actually get down to topic? Wow. That's crazy. ENTP versus the ENSTJ. Here's our first slide. Thank you, Bob, for moving me along like that. Let's look at these vectors. Here's the differences. Forest trees. ENTPs tend to get lost in the details of a project. Now, this is going to sound weird. Say, what? Well, I thought they aren't detail-oriented. That's absolutely false. We are completely detail-oriented. About only those details that we want to be or detail-oriented about, and we feel like it. It seems fun. Like this. Doesn't this seem detail-oriented to you? This little presentation I made. I'm sitting here at home making these little presentations. This is pretty detail oriented, right? Absolutely it is. What am I not detail oriented about? SI shit. Keeping track of schedules, getting little flyers out on time for work work and shit like that. Boring ass shit. Anyway. Whereas the ESTJ, they keep the big picture in mind while working on a given project. So they don't lose track of themselves in time like that. Why? They don't have SI in their fourth slot. They've got FI in their fourth slot. Well, they do. They've got it in their second slot. That's perfect for them. That's going to work beautifully because why? They're going to execute by pushing people to do stuff. They're going to regulate those people. They're the ultimate supervisor type. And they're going to be on top of the big picture and on top of the details. All right? So they're ideal to manage people in my opinion if you have a, something that's concrete that needs to be done maybe not if you've got you're talking about like oh well they're not ideal to manage this group of, of preschool teachers fine but the point is if you got shit that needs to get done then I'm not saying preschool teachers don't have shit to get done but in terms of managing them you don't have to make sure that that car is off the line by the end of the day whipping the preschool kids to make sure it happens you know alright next let's go down I'm going too slow Strategy tactics, ENTP, tactically brilliant, strategically disinterested. ESTJ, strategically brilliant, tactically slow. And strategically brilliant, 
is um, not an overstatement if you narrow the scope of what you're talking about to their expertise. I want to stress that they're not broad. They don't have a million different skills usually. Although, um, one of my friends, one of the ESTJs is quite a good guitarist actually. And uh, he's always had that going on since early on. He's had that and his business things. He's got a couple of distinct things he does. Nothing but all good about people making more different stuff, in my opinion. All right, so now, relationship to abstractions. ENTP is conditional. ESTJ is final. They like to settle in on their final model. Um, they like to have a clear understanding of how things ought to be. It's a big difference between ENTP and ESTJ. It's what makes us a bad match for a relationship for a romantic relationship, but it's great for friendships. Um, group orientation. We prioritize the individual over the group. They prioritize the group over the individual. Rarely comes into conflict with friendships. Almost never. Doesn't just doesn't come up, right? Because um, it's a political thing, really. All right, reality default. We are interested in the underlying nature and structure of reality. ESTJs are interested in the manifestations of reality. Concrete, we're, we're matted up as far as we can go. Flexibility, we're more flexible, comfortable with late changes. They're less flexible, uncomfortable with late changes. Tolerance, we're more tolerant. They're less tolerant, but not intolerant, provided tolerance is the societal norm. They will embody whatever that norm is, generally speaking, the norm that they grow up with. The point of that is they embody the system, whatever it is. They're not, they're not non-conformists. Risk, that's a nice way of saying they're kind of conformists. Risk averse, which isn't a bad thing to me. Risk averse, we are least risk averse of all types except maybe E and FP. The other crazy ones are crazy cousins. They are probably too risk avoidant, I would say. But then I think everybody's too risk avoidant. All right, opportunity seeking. We prioritize opportunities over risk avoidance, obviously. They're only at low risk. That goes without saying. I don't even know why I made another slide for that. That's just the other side of the other thing. All right, so let's go on to the next thing. Bob. Bob. Hello, Bob. There. Thank you. Well, dude, I don't know how long I'm going to talk about a given slide before I need to move on. Now, look at this one. Okay, number two or four. I'll go faster. Optimism and pessimism. We're more optimistic. They're less optimistic. But they're not pessimistic at all. I mean, they're not... They're... they're pretty optimistic. They're just not as optimistic as us. We're the most ambu amb ambiguity tolerant of all the types. We are the most ambiguity tolerant. And ESTJ is a medium. And, I mean, they're not very amb ambiguity tolerant, but they're not reactionary because they're T's, you know? Verification. How much we need to continue to verify things in our head. Now, we, ours is very high, they're very low, but in the world, theirs is high, ours is low. So, like, for example, if they've got stuff, they're gonna check it and make sure, oh, it's, it's coming up on springtime, I need to move it over here so it doesn't get wet when the snow melts, shit like that, you know? And it also plays with mindfulness, very high mindfulness. So really, we're talking about verification drive is kind of mindfulness inside your head. Mindfulness is mindfulness outside your head, right? All right, so planning, we're very low, they're very high. <laughs> Decisiveness, we're low, they're high. Efficiency, we're mixed. I, we can be the most efficient by far when we're when we're rolling, and we can be completely inefficient if we are tasked with doing something specific. That's just to let us play, really. Group reading. <sighs> that doesn't mean like how do how well did they read the storybook during group time. That means. Uh, how well can you read the mood of a group? ENTPs can be excellent at this. We're not quite as good as ENFPs. We're not quite as good as a couple other types like ENFJs or ES ESFJs or whatever. But we are quite good at groups. We're not good, however, at reading how individual others feel about individual us, you know? So that's different than reading the mood of a group. I'm pretty good with a room. I'm pretty bad with individuals sometimes. I, so I have come to understand. And the level of my confusion, I, what I've come to understand is I'm so bad at it or so ignorant at it that I have no conception of how ignorant at it I am. And I'm just it's just sort of dawning on me like, 
oh, I think that person's mad at me like two weeks after they got mad at me, you know? Because I haven't noticed them talking to me for a while. That's weird. Is something wrong with me? <laughs> no, Eric. Talking with fans, people says there's nothing wrong with you. Relationship formality. I do not like formality in relationships at all. Kids call me Eric or Straussy or whatever the hell they want to call me. I don't care. I'm not their boss. I'm their helper. All right. I'm their particularly yelly helper. E number three, constructive executive. I use this term to refer to people who it's it's a work style preference. It's basically executing a plan or making it up as you go. Uh, you could call it the stir fry method, constructive versus the baking method, executive. Understanding of self. We see ourselves as personal attributes that are possessed. They see themselves as impacts upon the world. ENTP. We are the most egalitarian of all types. They're medium. We reject group exclusivity. They accept group exclusivity. We're quite idealistic. They're medium. We have very low finality, the lowest of all, which is the same thing. It's kind of like ambiguity tolerance, which is we're fine with things changing, except for one area, relationships. We prefer finality. A fun distinction refers to the ability to mix work and play the need to I'm sorry the need to distinguish between work and play which for us it's I put medium but I could have put high I don't know I could have put very high I could have put highest when you know something's work you don't want to do it when it seems like it's fun you don't care we have more starts they have more completions we're kind of half-assed about finishing shit they're very good about it they're great people to know and have around they're not judgy they're not judging for personal shit. They're kind of like us. It's hard to make them mad. Probably because they're kind of emotionally, you know, stunted or whatever. I like it when it's hard to make people mad. I, I don't mind, like, I, or at least if, if they get over it when I acknowledge it was, I was wrong. All right, but I don't usually give these people any reason to be mad at me, ideally. Stress tolerance. Ours is very high. There's medium. Relationship development. Ours is instrumental there's a determinant what I mean by that is I don't know why what I meant by determinant there huh I don't know skip it names and titles forgotten important oh he's the whatever what was he again he was the president of this massive corporation oh what was his name Bob or something his name's Mr. Velvet oh right um episodic hole we're episodic, they're whole, which means we tend to see the world as a series of short stories. They can have meanings independent of one another, exclusive of one another. They seem to see things as part of the big whole. Questioning preference. We like to ask why, they like to ask how. Uh, emotional an anchors. We have more emotional anchors than they do. They have less than we do. Emotional anchors means... Um, brief visitations to a time or space object in order to experience those emotions again. And leadership style, we're collaborative, they're directive. We don't like to give orders. I don't like to give orders. I really, really want it for people to just take initiative and get shit done and we don't have to think about it. Physical confrontation, nope. Them, okay. They're not, they're not, We. I don't want physical confrontation, that's for sure. Gate bearing. We are looser, loping there, stiffer, angular. That's what it says, and that's what my experience has been as well, knowing a couple of them for sure. And a third one that I think is ESTJ, but I'm not entirely sure. He he matches up with these types in a lot of ways. And again, they all come from three very different backgrounds. So they express differently, but you see the same you see the same traits anyway. Um, you see him express slightly differently, but it makes sense. It resonates as sensible at any rate. So, last thing I want to do here on this before we call it a, a wrap. Today is a pretty special day for me because I have 100 subscribers to my YouTube channel. 
And if you are one of those subscribers, I just want to say thank you very much for subscribing. And is this is so exciting to me. I can't even begin to explain how exciting it is to have a hundred subscribers on YouTube. Unbelievable. Thank you very much for watching and talking with famous people. I will try to make good videos to justify your subscription. Talking, talking with famous people.